Have you ever heard of the term fish in poker? It's kind of a brutal term, but it really means bad player. And poker is all about exploiting bad players, making them make mistakes to you. That's how you win in poker, by putting pressure on bad players and letting them make mistakes to you. There are so many strategies to play against different types of players, and today we're gonna go over how to play against a fish or a bad player. If you do this, and the majority of the people that you're playing with at the low stakes probably are on, we'll call it the more recreational side. If you can learn these simple strategies to exploit these players, you're gonna see a significant increase in your win rate. Hey guys, I'm Lexi Gavin Mather, professional poker player and coach, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about who I am and what my story is before we get into how to exploit a fish. I started playing poker many moons ago. I was always playing with my grandma and my brother, but I really started to take it seriously in college. I was starting to see some money come in that I was able to use for food and books and things like that. I was working so hard studying to become a lawyer. Meanwhile, I was making all this money playing poker. It really was just a profitable hobby at that point. And I kind of had a crossroads Roads. Do I continue going down this law route or do I kind of put it all on hold and take a leap of faith and try playing poker for a living? And I'm so glad that I did because poker has allowed me to experience a level of freedom, financial stability that I never thought was possible. I met my husband playing poker. I met so many amazing people, have so many friends. I got to travel the world. I've played poker all over the world, including places like Monte Carlo, France, Spain, Italy, Peru, Canada, all over the world. It is poker that actually allowed me to do this. Whether you're looking to make poker as a profitable hobby or kind of trying to do it more professionally, I do have a course that might help you with it. It's called the Poker Accelerator. You can visit the description box below or visit LexiGavinMather.com. It'll give you the tools and the fundamentals and the foundation to learn how to win in poker, you know, maybe one day make some big bucks. <laughs> so I know you came here to watch a video on how to exploit the fish at the poker table. So let me show you a little snippet of my course. If you wanna see more, you're gonna have to buy it, but let's go jump over to my computer so I can show you how to exploit and beat the fish. Let's go. So your overall strategy versus all players is you have to be aware of yours and your opponent's physical toughs. Now this is just something that I can't stress enough. It's really, really important to make sure you're paying attention at the poker table. And when you sit down at the poker table, a lot of people just tend to just sit down, just set up their stack and put their headphones on and just look on their phone and just play their game. But really one of the first things that I do when I sit down at a poker table is I will will take a glance at who each individual person at the table is. I'll look at them, I'll look at them in the face, I'll look at their stack, and I start to base my reads just on their physical appearance alone. And I will watch how they interact when they get their cards, I'll watch how they handle their chips. There's all different things, all different physical tells that player gives off when they are playing poker. So the very first thing is take a glance around the table, look who the big stacks are, look who the short stacks are, look who the older guys are, look who the drunk people are, just try and get a feel for the overall table, the game flow, and what you can expect when you sit down with these people. Number two is understand that the deck and variance doesn't play favorites. Sorry, this is uh, not proper English, but basically I'm saying that there's variance in poker, the deck doesn't play favorites, and to just kind of be okay with that and embrace the variance, embrace the swings in poker, because no matter what, there are swings in poker and you just gotta deal with it. Again, against all players, be relentless, abuse them until they fight back, aggression wins in poker, so a strategy of betting and raising is far superior to a strategy of checking and calling. And then finally, be confident, stick to your fundamentals. Don't try and be a hero, just play a solid game, solid foundation. If you are playing at a softer table full of more recreational players, then you can play more of an exploitable strategy where you are making all different kinds of plays and maybe not completely typical plays just because they are playing so far away from a GTO strategy. If you're playing versus more experienced players, more GTO based 
bass players, then really try and stick to your GTO fundamentals. There's a million courses out there that heavily go into GTO strategy if you're not very confident with it. But yeah, so basically just be confident, stick to your fundamentals and you will succeed. So first let's talk about fishy or inexperienced players. The majority of people that play poker are, I feel like fishy is a very mean <laughs> word and I wish that there was a better word for it. Let's just call them inexperienced recreational players. There's a lot more recreational players than there are pros. I think something like only 2% or maybe less of people in the world that play poker can make a living doing it. And it's not because that 98% studies really hard and tries, no, of course, like the people that are watching in this video have a much greater chance of winning in the game, but there's 98% of people, 99% of people that just play for fun and don't wanna put in work. So that's gonna be the majority of people that you play with, especially if you're playing lower buy-ins, right? Like if you're playing 25, 50 cent online, or if you're playing, you know, one, two live, or if you're playing $100 tournament buy-ins live, like the majority of the field is gonna be fishy and inexperienced. So some general rules that I follow when I'm playing inexperienced players is I don't bluff first them too often. Of course I bluff everybody in poker, but more recreational players have a harder time folding. So your bluffs aren't gonna get through as much. So they're just gonna call you down with bottom pair and middle pair on boards that they probably shouldn't, right? Like if you're triple barrel bluffing on a board where the flush and the straight draw miss and you're holding a blocker and they call you with bottom pair, you're just gonna be like, why did you call? Oh yeah, because they're there to have fun. They don't really love folding that much. So I don't bluff them quite as much, but when I do bluff, love them, it's gonna be the lower part of my linear range. So I am gonna widen my linear range versus them, meaning like best hands. And the worst hands in my linear range are gonna be the hands that I am bluffing versus them. Next, you wanna widen your calling range. So I feel like a lot of recreational players like to either over bluff and overvalue bad hands, right? Marginal hands. So for example, if they have a seven on a king high board, if it's like king seven deuce, three deuce, I feel like they're gonna like way overvalue a hand like a seven. Really, you can widen your calling range versus them because they're gonna think they're betting for value and really they're just value owning themselves, right? So widen your calling range versus them and don't bluff versus them as much. Now I have bet big when you have it, don't worry about balance. Now I don't want you to be the type of player that bets small when they don't have it, bets really big when they have it. That's really, really exploitable as a general rule. But if you know your opponent isn't paying attention to your bet sizing, or if they again are just a player that is gonna call you with middle pair no matter what, when you have a hand that you wanna get value with, bet big. Like they don't understand the concept of not getting the correct odds to call with certain parts of their range. So typically when I know that I'm up against a fishier player, I will bet big and usually they will pay me off. I said, don't worry about balance because like I said, they're not paying attention as much to what you're doing. So they're not gonna pick up on your bet sizing patterns. They're just overall not gonna be paying as much attention if they're fishier and more inexperienced. Okay, so next I have, their physical tells are obvious. Yes, they are obvious. It's actually remarkable how some really, really bad players will very obviously, they'll just get really excited when they look down at their cards and they see that they have a good hand. They'll start cutting out bets in their chip stack. Some players will actually grab chips and hold it in their hand before the action is on them because they know that they're going to put in chips. I think it's pretty easy to figure out which players are doing it as a reverse tell, meaning which players are doing this to kind of throw you off, knowing that you're paying attention to their tells. But I think most players that are on the recreational side, they just get really excited and like to handle their chips prematurely. Be aware of their physical tells because they are more obvious than a more experienced player. And then be aware of their bet sizing tells. Recreational players, fishier players have such obvious bet sizing tells. They'll bet big, big, big when they have it, or they'll bet really, really small when they don't don't have it, like try and pick up on these patterns and then figure out ways to exploit them. If you notice that your opponent is always betting small and just trying to put in a little bit of money into the pot just to try and take down the pot because they're uncomfortable with their hand, well then you should be raising them a lot. If you notice that they're betting really big, then you probably shouldn't hero call them as much, right? You know, other players will reverse it. They'll bet really big when they are bluffing and they'll bet smaller when they have a value hand because they want to get called. And the best 
best way to figure this out is just to kind of watch what they've been doing. And I think it's pretty easy to pick up what their patterns are. Most fishier players, they don't switch their bet size strategy mid session, right? Like I don't think that they're gonna be like, oh, I think they're picking up on the fact that I'm always betting big when I have it and small when I don't. And let's reverse it. It happens of course, but I feel like for the majority of players, it's pretty obvious to figure out what they're doing. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like the way that I coach or if my style of teaching resonates with you and you want to check out the full course, visit LexiGavinMather.com or visit the description box below and come join the Poker Accelerator family. I would love to have you on the inside. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I do do these tip videos weekly. Yeah, you don't want to miss it. So thanks again for watching guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye.